Chapters 8 to 14 of The Book of Revelation from the World English Bible. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Reading by Robin Cotter, October 2007. The Book of Revelation from the World English Bible, chapters 8 to 14. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and seven trumpets were given to them. Another angel came and stood over the altar, having a golden censer. Much incense was given to him, that he should add it to the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar which was before the throne. The smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints went up before God out of the angel's hand. The angel took the censer, and he filled it with the fire of the altar, and threw it on the earth. There followed thunders, sounds, lightnings, and an earthquake. The seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. The first sounded, and there followed hail and fire, mixed with blood, and they were thrown to the earth. One-third of the earth was burnt up, and one-third of the trees were burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. The second angel sounded, and something like a great burning mountain was thrown into the sea. One-third of the sea became blood, and one-third of the living creatures which were in the sea died. One-third of the ships were destroyed. The third angel sounded, and a great star fell from the sky, burning like a torch, and it fell on one-third of the rivers, and on the springs of the waters. The name of the star is called Wormwood. One-third of the waters became Wormwood. Many people died from the waters, because they were made bitter. The fourth angel sounded, and one-third of the sun was struck, and one-third of the moon, and one-third of the stars, so that one-third of them would be darkened, and the day wouldn't shine for one-third of it, and the night in the same way. I saw and I heard an eagle flying in mid-heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe for those who dwell on the earth, because of the other voices of the trumpets of the three angels, who are yet to sound. The fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star from the sky which had fallen to the earth. The key to the pit of the abyss was given to him. He opened the pit of the abyss, and smoke went up out of the pit, like the smoke from a burning furnace. The sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke from the pit. Then out of the smoke came forth locusts on the earth, and power was given to them, as the scorpions of the earth have power. They were told that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those people who don't have God's seal on their foreheads. They were given power not to kill them, but to torment them for five months. Their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a person. In those days people will seek death, and will in no way find it. They will desire to die, and death will flee from them. The shapes of the locusts were like horses prepared for war. On their heads were something like golden crowns, and their faces were like people's faces. They had hair like women's hair, and their teeth were like those of lions. They had breastplates like breastplates of iron. The sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots, or of many horses rushing to war. They have tails like those of scorpions and stings. In their tails they have the power to harm men for five months. They have over them as king the angel of the abyss. His name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in Greek he has the name Apollyon. The first woe is past. Behold, there are still two woes coming after this. The sixth angel sounded. I heard a voice from the horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, who had one trumpet, Free the four angels, who are bound at the great river Euphrates. The four angels were freed, who had been prepared for that hour and day and month and year, so that they might kill one-third of mankind. The number of the armies of the horsemen was two hundred million. 
I heard the number of them. Thus I saw the horses in the vision, and those who sat on them, having breastplates of fiery red, hyacinth blue, and sulphur yellow, and the heads of lions. Out of their mouths proceed fire, smoke, and sulphur. By these three plagues were one-third of mankind killed, but the fire, the smoke, and the sulphur which proceeded out of their mouths. For the power of the horses is in their mouths and in their tails, for their tails are like serpents and have heads, and with them they harm. The rest of mankind, who were not killed with these plagues, didn't repent of the works of their hands, that they wouldn't worship demons. And the idols of gold and of silver and of brass and of stone and of wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk, they didn't repent of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their sexual immorality, nor of their thefts. I saw a mighty angel coming down out of the sky, clothed with a cloud. A rainbow was on his head. His face was like the sun, and his feet like pillars of fire. He had in his hand a little open book. He set his right foot on the sea, and his left on the land. He cried with a loud voice, as a lion roars. When he cried, the seven thunders uttered their voices. When the seven thunders sounded, I was about to write, but I heard a voice from the sky, saying, Seal up the things which the seven thunders said, and don't write them. The angel who I saw standing on the sea and on the land lifted up his right hand to the sky, and swore by him who lives for ever and ever, who created heaven and the things that are in it, the earth and the things that are in it, and the sea and the things that are in it, that there will no longer be delay. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he is about to sound, then the mystery of God is finished, as he declared to his servants the prophets. The voice which I heard from heaven, again speaking with me, said, Go, take the book which is open in the hand of the angel, who stands on the sea and on the land. I went to the angel, telling him to give me the little book. He said to me, Take it and eat it up. It will make your stomach bitter, but in your mouth it will be as sweet as honey. I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. It was as sweet as honey in my mouth. When I had eaten it, my stomach was made bitter. They told me, You must prophesy again over many peoples, nations, languages, and kings. A reed like a rod was given to me. Someone said, Rise and measure God's temple and the altar and those who worship in it. Leave out the court which is outside of the temple and don't measure it, for it has been given to the nations. They will tread the holy city underfoot for forty-two months. I will give power to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy one thousand two hundred sixty days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands, standing before the Lord of the earth. If anyone desires to harm them, fire proceeds out of their mouth and devours their enemies. If anyone desires to harm them, he must be killed in this way. These have the power to shut up the sky, that it may not rain during the days of their prophecy. They have power over the waters, to turn them into blood, and to strike the earth with every plague, as often as they desire. When they have finished their testimony, the beast that comes up out of the abyss will make war with them, and overcome them, and kill them. Their dead bodies will be in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also their Lord was crucified. From among the peoples, tribes, languages, and nations, people will look at their dead bodies for three and a half days, and will not allow their dead bodies to be laid in a tomb. Those who dwell on the earth rejoice over them, and they will be glad. They will give gifts to one another, because these two prophets tormented those who dwell on the earth. After the three and a half days the breath of life from God entered into them, and they stood on their feet. Great fear fell on those who saw them. I heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, Come up here. They went up into heaven in the cloud, and their enemies saw them. In that day there was a great earthquake, and a tenth of the city fell. Seven thousand people were killed in the earthquake, and the rest were terrified, and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe is past. Behold, the third woe comes quickly. 
The seventh angel sounded, and great voices in heaven followed, saying, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord, and of his Christ. He will reign for ever and ever. The twenty-four elders, who sit on their thrones before God's throne, fell on their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give you thanks, Lord God the Almighty, the one who is and who was, because you have taken your great power and reigned. The nations were angry, and your wrath came, as did the time for the dead to be judged, and to give your bond servants the prophets, their reward, as well as to the saints, and those who fear your name, to the small and the great, and to destroy those who destroy the earth. God's temple that is in heaven was opened, and the ark of the Lord's covenant was seen in his temple. Lightnings, sounds, thunders, an earthquake, and great hail followed. A great sign was seen in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was with child. She cried out in pain, laboring to give birth. Another sign was seen in heaven. Behold a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his heads seven crowns. His tail drew one-third of the stars of the sky, and threw them to the earth. The dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth, so that when she gave birth he might devour her child. She gave birth to a son, a male child, who was to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. Her child was caught up to God and to his throne. The woman fled into the wilderness, where she has a place prepared by God, that there they may nourish her one thousand two hundred sixty days. There was war in the sky. Michael and his angels made war on the dragon. The dragon and his angels made war. They didn't prevail, neither was a place found for him any more in heaven. The great dragon was thrown down, the old serpent, he who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now is come the salvation, the power, and the kingdom of our God, and the authority of his Christ, for the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down, who accuses them before our God day and night. They overcame him because of the Lamb's blood, and because of the word of their testimony. They didn't love their life, even to death. Therefore rejoice, heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the earth and to the sea, because the devil has gone down to you, having great wrath, knowing that he has but a short time. When the dragon saw that he was thrown down to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. Two wings of the great eagle were given to the woman, that she might fly into the wilderness to her place, so that she might be nourished for a time, and times, and half a time, from the face of the serpent. The serpent spewed water out of his mouth, after the woman like a river, that he might cause her to be carried away by the stream. The earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth, and swallowed up the river, which the dragon spewed out of his mouth. The dragon grew angry with the woman, and went away to make war with the rest of her seed, who keep God's commandments, and hold Jesus's testimony. Then I stood on the sand of the sea. I saw a beast coming up out of the sea, having ten horns and seven heads. On his horns were ten crowns, and on his heads blasphemous names. The beast which I saw was like a leopard, and his feet were like those of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. One of his heads looked like it had been wounded fatally. His fatal wound was healed, and the whole earth marveled at the beast. They worshipped the dragon because he gave his authority to the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? A mouth speaking great things and blasphemy was given to him. Authority to make war for forty-two months was given to him. He opened his mouth for blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his dwelling, those who dwell in heaven. It was given to him to make war with the saints, and to overcome them. Authority over every tribe, people, language, and nation was given to him. All who dwell on the earth will worship him, everyone whose name has not been written from the foundation of the world in the book of life of the Lamb who has been killed. 
If any one has an ear, let him hear. If any one has captivity, he will go. If any one is with the sword, he must be killed. Here is the endurance and the faith of the saints. I saw another beast coming up out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke like a dragon. He exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence. He makes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast, whose fatal wound was healed. He performs great signs, even making fire come down out of the sky to the earth in the sight of the people. He deceives my own people who dwell on the earth because of the signs he was granted to do in front of the beast, saying to those who dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast who had the sword wound and lived. It was given to him to give breath to it, to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, and cause as many as wouldn't worship the image of the beast to be killed. He causes all, the small and the great, the rich and the poor, and the free and the slave, to be given marks on their right hands, or on their foreheads, and that no one would be able to buy or to sell, unless he has that mark, the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom, he who has understanding, let him calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is six hundred sixty-six. I saw, and behold, the Lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him a number, one hundred forty-four thousand, having his name, and the name of his father, written on their foreheads. I heard a sound from heaven, like the sound of many waters, and like the sound of a great thunder, the sound which I heard was like that of harpists playing on their harps. They sing a new song before the throne, and before the four living creatures and the elders. No one could learn the song except the one hundred forty-four thousand, those who had been redeemed out of the earth. These are those who are not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are those who follow the Lamb wherever he goes. These were redeemed by Jesus from among men, the first fruits to God and to the Lamb. In their mouth was found no lie, for they are blameless. I saw an angel flying in mid heaven, having an eternal good news to proclaim to those who dwell on the earth, and to every nation, tribe, language, and people. He said with a loud voice, Fear the Lord and give him glory, for the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made the heaven, the earth, the sea, and the springs of waters. Another, a second angel, followed, saying, Babylon the great has fallen, which has made all the nations to drink of the wine of the wrath of her sexual immorality. Another angel, a third, followed them, saying with a great voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image, and receives a mark on his forehead or on his hand, he also will drink of the wine of the wrath of God which is prepared unmixed in the cup of his anger. He will be tormented with fire and sulphur in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. The smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever. They have no rest day and night. Those who worship the beast and his image, and whoever receives the mark of his name, hears the patience of the saints, those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. I hear the voice from heaven saying, Write, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, for their works follow with them. I looked, and behold a white cloud, and on the cloud one sitting like a son of man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. Another angel came out from the temple, crying with a loud voice to him who sat on the cloud, Send forth your sickle, and reap, for the hour to reap has come, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. He who sat on the cloud thrust his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. Another angel came out from the temple which is in heaven. He also had a sharp sickle. Another angel came out from the altar, he who has power over fire, and he called with a great voice to him who had the sharp sickle, saying, Send forth your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for the earth's grapes are fully ripe. The angel thrust his sickle into the earth, and gathered the vintage of the earth. 
and threw it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. The winepress was trodden outside of the city, and blood came out from the winepress, even to the bridles of the horses, as far as one thousand six hundred stadia. End of chapters 8 to 14